What is going on YouTube? My name is Lucas and today do I have something special for you. I did an interview with the CEO and co-founder of Valkyrie. I was beyond excited to have another interview with Ryan Walsh. Uh, amazing, amazing individual. Has done a ton of stuff for the drone sector. Is doing an amazing, amazing stuff for his company. So I could not be more excited to provide you guys with this content. Uh, it's just a blast to talk to Ryan every single time. So I thank him every single time because it is truly an honor to talk to him. So if you guys are interested in Valkyrie, if you're interested in drones, if you're interested in the future of drones, I suggest you stay tuned for this interview. So last time we talked was December 2nd. It feels like it was just yesterday. Um, you guys have accomplished a ton. I mean, you really have. And um, so the first kind of the thing I want to talk about is if you could just kind of recap just a little bit. I know we'll lead into a bunch of questions about some of the things you've done, but some of the, some of the stuff you've accomplished since December. Sure, sure. Um, we've really been making a lot of strides, um, especially with partners in the industry, um, really developing some amazing systems with a number of different companies. Um, I'm sure you saw the Ag Eagle demonstration last month in um, Scottsdale, where we did the beverage service on a golf course. So that was uh, a great first step for a public demonstration for our partnership with Ag Eagle. And um, we're really looking forward to developing that uh, over the coming months to create a commercial application for it. Um, really a lot of my focus has just been ramping up the manufacturing and distribution both domestically and internationally uh, so we can start really getting units into all of these trials you know we were somewhat limited while we were making them in-house but you know by adding in um, you know quality manufacturers like Ag Eagle for the U.S. and we're working with some other ones for our international markets um, it's really given us a uh, big jump because now my team can focus on the design and the research and development and the next steps for the second generations and the mailboxes and the urban developments. Um, so we're kind of back to where we want to be doing a lot of the design much more so than the manufacturing implementation. For sure. Yeah. And so that kind of, I mean, you nailed it perfectly. That leads me right in. So you guys obviously don't, aren't satisfied with just the, the original design, you're constantly kind of updating, doing and looking to, to make things better. Have you guys come up with any new, you know, creative, like, holy smokes, like we, this is really cool. We should implement this into our, our receptacle. Anything, anything new regarding the receptacle? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's definitely been some modifications we've made as we've gone through testing. Um, you know, we were doing a number of, uh, trials with the Ag Eagle while we were getting ready for the golf course and identified areas that we could make more robust and more reliable. Um, we're working with several Canadian partners right now for cold weather um, to make sure we can withstand Canadian winters. Um, we're, we're beginning to look at how do we remove any cases of unreliability, right? I mean, if this thing's going to be sitting outside in the rain, in the snow, in the sun, whatever it may be, how do we make sure that it will perform exactly as expected for the customer at all times? So, um, you know, tweaking it, you know, I'm sure if you've seen over the generations of our prototypes since 2017, um, you know, we've made a number of different models, changes, things like that, but we're always testing new door mechanisms, new ways for the communication with the drone, communication with the app, um, all types of things. So we've been doing a lot of that refining, a lot of that, you know, really quality assurance um, to make sure that this thing is ready to be in front of every business, every home. Um, you know, we also are working on a lot of the next stages of development where it's going to include um, recharging. Uh, so we're working with our partners at Wibotic and Global Energy Transmission, uh, making sure we have the most robust um, system, uh, our battery partners, Soteria, making sure that we have the, the best possible energy densities in our boxes, um, really trying to take 
uh, what we made and smooth out all of the rough areas. Um, you know, it's, it's a big hurdle going from a prototype to a commercial ready unit. And so we're going through everything with a fine tooth, fine tooth comb meticulously to make sure that we don't run into anything we didn't foresee later on. So it's a lot of just putting it through its paces. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that that's all makes sense. I mean, you want the, the best product to come out, you know, once it's ready and, and ready to go. So m completely makes sense. Now I'll kind of hit on it a little bit more, but when it comes to like security measures, I know you recently did a, an interview where you were kind of hitting on some of the security aspects that the boxes or, or the receptacles are going to have to really kind of have in place. Um, and I know that if, you know, tampering is done, you're, I mean, you're talking about a federal offense. So is there any like security measures that you're really kind of enforcing and putting in or uh, what, from a security standpoint, what, what can we expect? We're really making it more robust, making sure that the individual lockers are tamper resistant, making sure the box is not easy to scale. Um, you know, I'm sure as you see that it kind of crowns out almost like a, a tower on a castle and that's yeah. specifically so it is very fine. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we don't give anybody a reason to be enticed to try and disturb the process, you know, let alone from the spinning blades of the drone. Um, so we want to make sure that the physical security is, is first and foremost, um, something that we haven't necessarily demonstrated publicly yet, but that centering mechanism, when it's not in use, those bars actually create almost like a, like a pound sign, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so it, it makes the access to that top door very difficult. Yeah. Uh, you know, so preventing anybody from from going in that way, um, you know, it, it would require some serious tools or demolitions to to get in that box. Um, so we're testing it over and over again for those things. But more importantly, is the cyber security, making sure that everybody's data is secure, not storing a lot of data, uh, the customer, uh, making sure that there is several points of redundancy in this security to make sure nobody has anything to be concerned of. Um, it's, it's been a lot of trial and error, um, you know, bringing third parties in to make sure that they go and, and root everything out. So um, there's nothing that we may have missed. Um, so we're really trying to dive into a lot of the nuances now. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, because I know a lot of people, and this leads me into my next thing is a lot of people have been asking me, hey, you know, has are they going to be going, you know, selling it to the public now? And you know, they've been focusing on more of the commercial aspect. And I know um, you've kind of hit on it a little bit before that you're getting to that point. Have you got to the point where it's going to be sold non-commercial and you're going to be able to sell it to like the everyday customer now? Soon, um, we don't want to go and start pushing units out to end users before the the market's really ready, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, by the time that a small business would implement this, I mean, it's not very expensive in the scheme of what a drone network costs. It's actually one of the more cost effective pieces and, and we did that on purpose. Um, but we don't want to implement an early generation model if the market's still two years away, right? Because that may be time we can develop and perfect it even further um, and provide a better value proposition to those customers. So we're not necessarily in a hurry to put this in front of places prematurely. Yeah, completely makes sense. And that's kind of what I was, uh, you know, letting them know. I, and I just figured I'd ask you and let you explain it because, yeah, it'd probably be better coming from you than, than me. So uh, I, that was one of the questions they wanted me to ask. Um, so th this next piece is, I know remote ID is, is huge now. Um, that was a big piece that got passed. Um, and we're really still kind of finding, at least from my perspective, we're finding out a lot more about remote ID. Can you talk about how remote ID will be implemented into your receptacle and, and maybe how other, you know, UAV users are going to be kind of working with you with that? You know, remote ID is is somewhat of a contentious topic right now, a little mm -hmm. controversial. Um, the FAA did go in a direction that most people weren't anticipating. Um, I'm sure you saw Wing has been making a lot of noise about how dissatisfied they are in the process. Um, there are some concerns over privacy and, and doing it from a broadcast uh, standpoint. Um, 
it doesn't necessarily affect us, right? Yeah. I mean, the fixed positions on the ground and uh, the way we see it is more as they're developing this airspace map, right, of all of the different moving drones at any given time, uh, being able to be part of that map as secured landing stations, if a drone needs to make an emergency landing or has to uh, you know, recharge, whatever it may be. Um, but that's later on in this. So we don't wanna you know, jump the shark, so to speak in this. We are really looking at how do we you know, make it better and bolster it to be a more strong uh, system suited for this. And uh, because we're not necessarily tied in so closely to remote ideas we are with other pieces of uh, you know some of the legislations that are coming out it's something we're paying attention to but doesn't have a direct impact on us yeah so. okay well that and that's yeah and i i think that's significant because you know you were talking about how some people are very dissatisfied with that and it'd be kind of interesting to see if they kind of step back and maybe adjust that or if this is really what they're going to focus on and, and move forward with so I just wanted to ask that one for sure. Yeah, um, so this next one, um, I, I'm trying to, I'm really focusing in on mail now. And I want I understand mail, like not actually boxes, but the specific mail that people get. I know um, I recently watched uh, DeJoy talk and he was kind of getting grilled um, about how they haven't been able to really upgrade their system, their network. And he's saying it's more financial, but do you see at some point or is mail going to be something that is going to be taken on by drones? Because, you know, obviously Workhorse endured some stuff with, with the, the USPS, but moving forward, is mail going to be something that, you know, drones will be delivering? Um, and can you speak on that or maybe how that will be implemented into the receptacle? You know, I think it's really going to be a hybrid approach as the market unfolds for a number of factors. Um, I'm sure you saw Flight Forward and, and Workhorse's demonstration a while ago of the, the drone leaving the UPS truck mm -hmm. and um, delivering to far away mailbox or very remote areas that are sometimes difficult. Um, we looked at a lot of data from the USPS and those really remote, distant, you know, properties in the middle of nowhere, they are very resource intensive because the route ends up becoming so much less efficient. Um, so using drones for those is almost an ideal situation. Uh, but when you have densely packed urban areas or you have densely packed uh, suburban areas, it it still makes sense to use mail trucks in a lot of cases. You know, we submitted the USPS RFI um, a year or so ago with uh, Sprint before T-Mobile um, and Ericsson, and it was you know, almost worrying that the USPS was so far behind in it. Yeah. Now, obviously, they have a lot of different issues, and I'm sure you mentioned you know the the financial is probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Um, you know, we're working with some great partners that uh, on the legislative and regulation side to really look at how this can be implemented nationwide. Um, but the USPS is notoriously slower to adopt its government. You know, there's it's the mail. They can't afford to implement something that they haven't vetted and tested thoroughly and, and found a good business case for. So I think it's going to be a very hybrid approach and it's going to be a slow adoption. Um, our mailbox version, which we'll be debuting later this year, uh, it's really kind of be, going to be focused more around that mail side. Um, you know, there's things in the U.S. Postal Code primarily that would definitely indicate different design applications. Um, you can't have a package receptacle and a mailbox contained in one, um, you know, one receptacle, right? It, it has to be separated. Mm -hmm. um, so looking at ways to do that. Um, it, it's just going to be something that's going to take a lot of back and forth between the industry and the USPS, but I think they're going to be one of the later adopters just because of the sheer volume that they would have to deal with. Yeah, I just I, I keep thinking to myself because like they are in a financial bind. And that's what that was one of the biggest emphasis that DeJoy kept saying is like, look, we're just so behind on money. And I started thinking, I mean, that's a big proponent and a big push for why people want drones is because it's going to be so cost efficient. And I'm like, man, this 
just makes sense. But like you said, if they, if they have to go through the entire process of testing it and going through it, that completely makes sense. But I just didn't know if maybe at some point someone might get in their ear and be like, look, this is significant. Like this is going to be a, a big time thing. And, you know, and maybe it's something to look at. So I just wanted to make sure I asked that question. Of course. Yeah. Um, and so the next thing I'm going to kind of switch gears a little bit and kind of talk about some of the, the partnerships that you have. Um, so back in December, uh, Valkyrie created a strategic partnership with Aurora, uh, Aurora Aerial. Can you speak about the partnership and how this is significant to you guys? You know, they've really proven themselves uh, to be um, a great up and comer in the Canadian market. Um, they have a lot of connections and ties within the industry. Um, so it almost seemed like a natural fit after our expansion into Canada. Um, we're going to be doing a number of different tests with them in the, in the coming months. So um, we'll be debuting more and more of that as it comes. Uh, but um, we're very excited about the opportunity with Aurora, you know. Yeah, for sure. And have you noticed, because uh, speaking of Canada, are they kind of still a little bit, I know the last time we had the interview, are they still a little bit ahead of where the United States is at as far as progression? And, and when it comes to actual, you know, just drone delivery in general, you know, heavy cargo and things like that? You know, it's somewhat apples to oranges of a comparison. I mean, two years ago, Canada was very behind, but mm -hmm. because you know, a smaller country, and it's a little easier to get access in Canada to the people you need to. It has sped up much more significantly than the U.S. Now, because Canada is so widespread, I mean, there's a lot of open areas up there, right? So it's easier to get the regulatory approvals for some of these trials. You know, we're, we're seeing a lot quicker response from Transport Canada than we would from the FAA. Um, so I think that Canada is probably going to end up moving quicker and will probably end up setting some of the standards as opposed to following the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, that could change at any point if the FAA decides that, you know, they want to take the next steps. I mean, what came out in December was very important for the steps that the FAA was taking and the remote ID and, and you know, the waiver process for 107. Um, so we're seeing these steps. It's it's not always going to be simultaneous. It's yeah. going to be, you know, one step after the other. Sometimes you'll see Europe copying what the U.S. is doing or Canada copying what Europe is doing. But all in all, it's it's very much moving in, in a systematic way. OK, because I was going to I was kind of wondering, like, is from a from a business standpoint, that could be somewhat challenging, because if like Canada is ahead and you're making a lot of progress in, say, Canada, and then maybe Europe's right, right around there. And then the U S is kind of lagging. It's kind of like, you got to be able to, you know, coincide with every single one of these and still be on the same. And I can see how that would be a little bit complicated. So definitely is. Yeah, I bet. Um, and then the next one is since, and it caught me, I'm not going to lie, Ryan, it caught me off guard. I was sitting there. I had, I had Fox business going and all of a sudden I see, you know, your guys' receptacle and then it pans over and they're like, there's Ryan Walsh. I'm like, Oh my goodness. So since you guys had that, you know, interview and kind of that demonstration, have you guys seen a lot more of an interest? Have people kind of been like, hey, this is actually a really cool thing. This is going to be the future. Have you gotten a lot more attention from that? Yeah, it's really uh, helped give us a lot of validation within the industry and opened a lot of doors. Um, we've established a number of new partnerships based off of that. Um, you know, we're really thankful to Fox for giving us that platform. Um, you know, doing the live demonstrations, it really showed people that this technology is ready to go, right? It's, it's not a far-flung concept anymore. It is here now. And so we're just waiting on the regulatory. And I think people seeing it really, you know, burn that into their minds, right? It's, it's not a, oh, this is 10 years away. This is 20 years away. This is today. And yeah. so, um, you know, being able to show it in that little segment they gave us was exponentially better than me telling people for the next, you know, however long. It just, it was great. It was great yeah, you could, you could tell even like Grady was like, did this just happen? Like, did a box really just appear inside this receptacle? He was kind of caught off guard and then he pants to you and it was just like, he, you know, he could, you could see that he was even excited about the situation. So that, I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah. So from that too, like I noticed, uh, and I, I reached out to Andrew cause I noticed, I was like, Hey, is that an ascend engineering, uh, you know, the drone. 
uh, can you kind of speak about your guys' partnership with Ascend Engineering and, and, you know, the connection with Andrew and everything like that? Yeah, we linked up with uh, the Ascend team and Andrew um, beginning of last year. And, uh, you know, they're located in Chicago and it just seemed like, you know, we should be talking, right? They're, they're our neighbors in the same industry. Um, you know, the one thing about the drone industry is it's very spread out globally. And so it's not always easy to have somebody in your backyard that you can collaborate with and test with and um, all the different pieces that come along with it. But they were focused very much on the drone side software and the autonomy and, and a number of those pieces, which is a perfect complement to what we're doing because a lot of the times customers will come to us and say, we have this drone airframe, you know, we want to integrate it with a Valkyrie landing station. Um, you know, we want to figure out how to make this whole system work and Ascend really steps up and kind of takes over in those cases. They'll, mm -hmm. they'll take the customer's drone, make sure it's completely foolproof when it comes to an overall network capability. So it's conversations with our box, conversations with, um, you know, the FAA and the remote ID and everything else. And so they've really proven to be fantastic partners in all of this. That's awesome. Yeah. I got, I'm supposed to be talking with Andrew this week too. And I got to, I'm hoping that his uh, Wolverines get knocked out of the tournament. Cause I got to give him a hard time at least on something, but <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to Andrew. Cause I'm, I think it's it's awesome to kind of get different perspectives because with you guys, it's it's the receptacle. It's literally what every drone is going to be delivering from. But they're more on the engineering aspect and everything like that. And I, I'm look, I'm really looking forward to talking to them about that. Um, and this leads me into my next piece. The biggest reason I bring up all these partnerships, and you kind of hit on it a little bit, is because by working with so many different companies, the sector not only creates comfortability, but would you say it also helps standardization? So like, with Valkyrie and other drone companies, like you guys are creating a pretty good universal standardization from the drone perspective and what it takes to actually link up and sync up with your guys' receptacle. Yeah, um, you know, we're seeing that quite a bit. And because we've somewhat become the de facto landing station providers, it's really provided us the ability to integrate with all these partners. And so they're working on delivering to our landing stations, you know, and so there's not a, I have an Apple or Android type situation, right? It's um, very much people are, are figuring out their individual pieces and you know even with the drone companies with the software with everything else being able to find what's best for the industry for the technology for everything moving forward it, there's it's so complicated there's so many things that need to be figured out so having core competencies come together and showing this is the system that works best we know what's worked we've tested it it really um brings the the industry together. And I think standardization is really going to be on the forefront of the conversation in the coming years. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and that's, I think that, like you said too, like with you guys being the, the receptacle right now, I mean, there's nobody else, at least that I can think of. I mean, that that's amazing. So um, I got another one towards the bottom that I'll kind of hit on that as well. Cause I think that's significant that you guys literally are like basically the only one. Um, so in October, you guys were named the best tech startup for North America by Tech in Motion events. Um, that had to be, you know, a great feeling. Can you kind of hit on that just a little bit? What what you got from that? Yeah, um, somebody that you know we're working with had actually reached out that was working with Tech in Motion, and um, she had mentioned that you know, hey, you want to look into this, and you know, we've uh, we've applied to different grants, different programs in the past. And, you know, sometimes you don't meet the criteria. Sometimes you're just looking for something different. You know, you never go into it. You know, you want to be optimistic, but you don't have expectations that you're going to win. So um, when we were informed that we had won Chicago, it was kind of crazy. We just, we weren't expecting it. There were amazing companies that are very well established in Chicago, um, such as Reapley and Spot Hero. I mean, these are huge huge names you know especially in in our area so when we won chicago it was kind of crazy it was a, it was a yeah. huge excitement for the team but then to go on to uh the nationals and the the regional whatever for north america um and be told we won best tech startup for north america it was incredible it was the 
it was a huge moment for the team to kind of culminate all the work they've been putting in. And uh, the guy who invented Siri actually presented our award, which (laughs) the tech nerd in me kind of fanboyed out a little bit. (laughs) It uh, It was a great validation point for everything the team has been doing. I bet. I bet that, I mean, that probably was just, just a great feeling. I mean, as a, as a whole team, cause I mean, we, we both come from like a team environment of, of the military and, you know, all the effort, the work you guys put in and, and it's all being gratified by, you know, these people that that's amazing. So uh, I want to congratulate you for that because I didn't get a chance to, to t- tell you personally. So um, now obviously this is what everyone obviously wants me to talk to you about all the time. It's about Ag Eagle. Um, I know you're limited on certain things you can talk about, so I'm going to kind of skirt along the best I possibly can. Uh, but, but you guys obviously showcased what your partnership is capable of. And in all honesty, it was, it was tremendous. I know you kind of gave me a, a heads up a couple of weeks prior about golfing and that was tremendous. I'm, my golf game is still terrible. Um, but, but it's, it's amazing to see just like you said earlier too, is just to be able to show a demonstration to create comfortability, to show the safety aspect, and then to just basically meet a need, I think is really cool. Can you talk about kind of how the idea came about, um, with just going to a golf course and then, um, maybe what other avenues can come from just doing this? You know, it's, uh, kind of one of those circumstantial situations where we took a look at the regulations and saw um, what is feasible today? What is something that is commercially viable that is not you know, something you have to go get a long waiver process for, you, you have to um, you know, jump through hoops like you know, beyond visual remote deliveries right now, right? So we were discussing it with Ag Eagle and looking for somewhere we can implement and golf courses just made the most sense, Mm -hmm. right? Golfers are only golfing during the day. They only really golf in good weather. Um, There's not enough density of the golfers on the course to where it becomes hazardous. There's obstacles that are great for flight paths because you don't fly over people. And they're all relatively contained in a very small area, you know, compared to, you know, a huge remote delivery to an island or something so Mm -hmm. it was ideal for a first step because a lot of the variables are removed in a golf application so we thought that would be great we spoke with some people that we knew in the industry um and sun city country club was very very supportive gave us everything we needed they were phenomenal throughout the process so everything really just kind of came together um you know we demonstrated it and it was uh, just that a demonstration now we're diving in and really figuring out how do we ramp this up commercially we've had uh, just a plethora of, of golf courses and industry people and um, different people that just have a stake in that that entire golf network and industry and it's been it's been almost overwhelming how many people really see this as the vision for what beverage service and golf courses look like um so it was a great first step but more importantly a hospital campus is not much different than a golf course it's spread out it's fixed waypoints you know somewhat closed airspace um so we see this as a big first step and a low risk way to pilot that out and then the same exact system can be put not only at every golf course in the u.s or in the world but now hospital campuses now different applications like government facilities where they need these quick logistics and they need to make sure it's done right every single time. Um, so after talking with Ag Eagle and seeing that, uh, that route to all of these new markets, uh, it was, it was a no brainer. Yeah, for sure. That, I mean, that is, that's tremendous because I think, I think it just shows like the safety aspect and it shows that we like, again, it's just another way to demonstrate that, this is going on. This is happening. Um, I, I I thought it was incredible. So 
it, it was amazing. And, and I know a lot of more people too reached out, started reaching out to me and they're like, Hey, can you believe this? This is phenomenal. And um, yeah, I, I was excited for it. So um, the next thing is, is uh, Micah sense. So Micah sense obviously just became an acquisition of ag Eagle and, you know, they're, the biggest piece was their sensors and things like that, that are going on. Um, is that going to have any play into like detecting your guys' receptacle? Um, is it going to be, have you heard anything about package delivery? Um, if, if you can speak on that. You know, I don't have any insider information on, on a lot of that, but yeah. uh, you know, there's some conversations we've had and I think it's more of a great value add um, for the golf course in particular, you know, Micah sense, um, you know, you put one of their sensors on one of Ag Eagle's drones, you know, they're not heavy, they're not big, they can get on there very easily. And now as the drone is doing deliveries over the golf course, it might be able to detect grass health or soil or, um, you know, see if there's any issues in the ponds or, you know, the different obstacles in there. Um, and so it's really just making a great system better. And so, you know, we're very excited about what's going to come of, of that acquisition through Ag Eagle. Um, we see a lot of these situations where you may be meaning to deliver a package as the primary objective, but for very, very little um, addition, very incremental, um, you can now add a whole other layer of capabilities on top of it, just piggybacking on what you're already doing. And, um, that kind of efficiency and, and that kind of um, you know, thought process through the entire network is really what's key in this, right? How do we take drones and make multiple areas safer, secure, better, more efficient, uh, more cost effective, whatever it may be. So uh, I think it was a brilliant move by Ag Eagle. Yeah, I, th I, I think it's incredible too, because I think, like you said, the biggest thing for me was that multiple things can be accomplished in, in one setting. So um, I thought that was cool. And then, you know, just the technology that's being implemented. I watched a video, um, them explaining it, because I had no idea some of the things that it did. And I was just kind of in shock and awe too, like, holy smokes, like, this is incredible. And I, I think it just shows to how far ahead some companies are in the entire drone aspect. Like people just don't even understand. And that's one of the biggest things I try to accomplish is just explain to people that this is a, this is happening. Like this drones are going to happen. And, and I was just kind of blown away by what they were able to, to acquire. So that, that was extremely exciting. Um, and then you guys recently, and I thought this was just <laughs> unreal uh you guys announced that you were going to be doing a deal with quick loads um i actually talked i put a video out and their ceo reached out and was like hey we can't thank you enough for doing that video um and i was like yeah no no problem i was like it's just cool what you guys are doing could you talk about the partnership or, or what you have in place with quick loads and what that could be meaning for in the future you know, it's still very early stage, but they obviously have, um, you know, container shipments and it's very easy to imagine what a larger drone receptacle would look like, um, you know, with using shipping containers and building in the elevators and sorting and all of those things. You can not only handle very large cargo deliveries, um, but now you can start looking at placing containers for know, micro fulfillment, you can look at, um, you know, how do you use these containers in a new and novel way? And it's really just a scaled up version of the landing station, right? And very cost effective. I mean, shipping containers can be bought for just dirt cheap, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so by integrating with quick loads, we're, we're looking at a future where the entire intermodal application is now available for different aspects of drone and cargo logistics. Um, so we're going to be rolling that out probably a little bit down the road. You know, we still have a lot of development to do and a lot of things to um, you know, work on with them, but I'm very excited to unveil what we are working on when it comes to fruition. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, you know, I've seen a lot of people talk about the micro facilities and, and all and the distribution that can come from that. And, you know, I even implemented that in my video when 
I was talking about what you guys did and it's just incredible did. I mean, we are like kind of in the early stages of that and the, the advancements that could be made are tremendous. So um, I'm really excited for that opportunity just to see how you guys take that on. Um, now that was kind of my last question. Is there anything else you got, you want to pass on and any updates with, with anybody else? Um, is there anything else that you're, you got planned out for the rest of the year that maybe you can kind of talk about or anything? There's a number of things. I can't quite speak on them yet. Um, you know, we can't necessarily publicly discuss them, but uh, it should be a just absolutely tremendous year for Valkyrie and for our partners and for the industry as a whole. So um, I expect to keep this pace up that we've done for the first quarter of the year well into 2022. So we're going to keep putting out a lot of great new things that just the industry hasn't seen before. Um, you know, we're, we're working on some amazing applications that use all of the same technology, but in completely novel use cases. Um, so we're really, really excited about what that looks like. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll be seeing announcements in the coming weeks and months about each one of them. Awesome. Well, Ryan, as always, I, I really appreciate your time. I know you're busy and, and so is the company and you guys are doing tremendous, tremendous things. So I, can't, I thank you so much for, for even spending the time with me to do this. So uh, oh, thank, thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, I look forward to the next one as always. I, I, I'm sure I'll keep pumping videos out on you guys. It's, it's a blast. So we really appreciate it. And you know, I can't wait to come back on in a couple of months and give you all the new updates. So well, yeah, let's yeah. do it for sure. So all right, Ryan. All right, Ryan. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Lucas. Take care. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye-bye.